Hello everyone, this is your friendly neighborhood Manti here, and today I'm going to be giving you another tutorial on Apple Script. So today we are going to be talking about lists. So what lists are are pretty much arrays. If you've ever used any other programming language, pretty much you should know what arrays are. But for all of you people who have never programmed before in your lives, pretty much arrays or lists in Apple Script case are a way of storing multiple values in one variable. So let's just get coding. So if you think back to my other tutorials on setting variables, you set a variable like this. So set var name to to some value. But you can store multiple values in this var name, and you do this by using curly brackets. So I want to store three values in this variable. So I'm going to do muffins, tacos, and then find the cake. So now var name has three values, and these values are muffins, tacos, and cake. Now to just display, you know, your uh, what array list, whatever you want to call it, just do get var name. We run this, and down here in our console, we see muffins, tacos, and cake has been returned. So that's basically setting a list of items. So you can also combine lists together by doing something like this. So let's just set another var name, var name to. And we're going to take this var name up here, so this list, so var name, and then going to add a new list on the side. So I'm going to make this new list right now. So var name dose to Make this enchiladas, quesadillas, I don't know if that, whatever works, and finally nachos. So we are going to get a completely new list with muffins, tacos, cake, then enchiladas, quesadillas, and nachos. So we're going to add var name and var name two, and finally we're going to return another var name. Run this. As you can down here, we have combined our lists together successfully. So you can do this in number of times with pretty much any number size list. It's kind of helpful, but you, know, you can find stuff to do with it. So you can set specific items in a list to something else. So you do this by set item 2 of var name. So we're going to take item 2, which is tacos, of this variable to a value. So I'm just going to switch this to notches and we're going to return our var name. As you can see, we have muffins, nachos, and cake because we replaced item two. Now we can do this with item uno. Return run nachos, tacos, cake. Item three. It's not its var name. I cannot type today. What we're we doing? Get over here. There we go. So we run this and muffins, tacos, nachos instead of cake. Excellent. So you can also count backwards from the end of a list. To do this, you just do negatives. So we're going to negative three, so we're going to count negative one, negative two, negative three. We're going to change muffins to tacos. So we run this, nachos, no, tacos, cake. Negative two will change tacos to nachos. And finally, negative one will just change cake to nachos. So that's how you count backwards and forwards from a list and change items. So you can also get a range of items list or set a range of items. So I'm going to set section of var name to items. Let's do. Let's just add another item on this for demonstration. Notches. Let's just do items two through four of var name. Var name. And finally, want to get. Section of var name. So what this is going to do is make a new list called section of var name with the items two through four of var name up here. So we're going to run this. As you can see, we have tacos, item two, item three, item four, cake, nachos. So we can do this any number of values. We can do one through two and get muffins and tacos, or you can just do whatever you want. So that is how you get, and you can also use that to set a specific range of values, but whatever you want to do. So you can also access random values from a list. It's actually a pretty neat feature. So let's just set a new variable. So set random value to. Let's see, 
some item of var name. And we're going to get random value. So what this is going to do is set a new variable random value to one of these items of var name up here. So it's pretty random. It's a great randomization function. So we're going to run this. As you can see, we return nachos. We're going to run this again. We return tacos, nachos, muffins, cake. So pretty random. So that's just a neat little feature. Also, we can get the length of lists. So pretty much what the length is is how many values are in a list. So to do this, we can just do set length of list to um, ought to you know what? capitalize this just for the sake of I don't know OCD. Set length of list to set length of far name. Excellent. I'm just going to get this length of list. Oh, actually, I don't think we have to do that. As you see, I returned four because there are four values in this list. So that's just a quick, neat little way to get how many values in a list. So, moving right along, you can also change strings or numbers into a list. So, say you have a boring old, let's just do number, number bar two. Yes, that's correct. Two. You have a number here. Say you want to change this into a list. Well, you just do that by adding as list to the end of it. So, so as list. As you, let's just return number var run. So we see we have a list of two. We can set number var two to four as list, and then we can get. Let's just get number var we'll put number var 2 on to the end of this list. So we're going to take 2 and 4 and combine it into one list. So you see 2 and 4. Now we can set a variable name like number var 3 and combine together and return that, but you can do whatever you want. So that's actually about it. You can just add strings on this, so let's just add a string, so set String var to string. So you can add strings on the end of list. So let's just set list var to tacos. Why not? And then you can just get the value of list var and string. Bar. Oosh. So you can concatenate strings on the list like that. I would suggest though adding as list to the end of this for pretty much everything. Because I know there are probably some bugs out there, but for now you can do that. But pretty much most times use as list at the end of um, strings and numbers if you're going to be adding them to the end of the list. Because I know there's uh, probably a few bugs out there and things you can't do, but I don't have the time to find them. So pretty much, um, don't. Yeah, I guess I'll recap. You can set lists. So set list bar to brackets. Then each of these are your values. So value one, value two, value three. I should also mention you can set as numbers. So one, two, three, something like that. You can get list, but I would get list name, something like that. You want to turn it. You can add lists to the end of each other, so set list one, two, one, set list two, 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 and set, let's change this, list three, two, list one, and list two, bind these two lists together to make one super list. Get random values from this, so set list to list one. Because you can't use list as a variable name to your values and just set random val to some item of list. Not list, list. There we go. My dog just sneezed. That was very scary. But, anyways. Um, string, changing strings, numbers, and lists, so set, 
string as this on top of capitalization to string as list. This will change this string value into a list. Get out. Okay. So you can set items from a list. So set item one of list to not item one, item one of list to let's see. Just any random value, so string. You can set items negative one, negative two to count backwards. You can set ranges, that's right, set new val to items one through three of list one. And what else? What else? I think that's about it, isn't it? Yes, indeed. So, <laughs> that's a pretty long one, but, you know, lists are kind of in-depth. I didn't think I covered much, but, you know, it's good primer for lists, pretty much. You can find more stuff on the internet. Google is your friend. So, that is all for today, guys. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.